Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in April of 2019, Nvidia bought ray tracing to a handful of GTX graphics cards and that support extended to the GTX 1660 Super here when it released six months later. The thing is, while it's therefore possible to enable ray tracing features in supported games with some GTX cards, the lack of dedicated RT cores means that performance will suffer. But how badly? With the shortage of new RTX cards at the moment and the price of older 2000 series GPUs continuing to rise, it may be tempting to enable ray tracing on that Pascal or Turing card, especially if you want a taste of true next gen in game effects. Let's see if the 6GB 1660 Super here can handle it then. First of all, let's see what difference it actually makes to some supported titles, starting with 2020's Cyberpunk 2077. In Cyberpunk we've got options for ray traced reflections, shadows and lighting, the last of which can be set anywhere from medium to psycho. Here's how the game looks with RT off, as you can see it's still visually quite impressive. Puddles still reflect colour to an extent and despite the game's issues there's no denying its beauty. Enabling RT takes these reflections one step further, the puddles reflect actual text and well lit environments packed with neon signs create a fantastic feeling of immersion. If we look at the pile of rubbish on the left of the screen here it's clear that the shadows are also more lifelike. Here is a cropped side by side image of the same scene. I line them up as best I can. So how do these enhancements affect gameplay? Well, brace yourselves. This is Cyberpunk running at medium settings with all the ray tracing effects turned off. We're getting a close to 60 FPS experience with acceptable 1.1% lows. This is probably a more intensive area because we've got traffic and we're surrounded by buildings. Driving around the outskirts of town or through the countryside would improve this frame rate by quite some margin. It's here we should get the best idea of a worst case scenario. So it's ray tracing time. Here is how the game performs with all the RT settings enabled and the lighting set to max. We're using the same medium preset though. We've lost 50 of our 58 frames and to be honest, the aforementioned effects aren't as eye-catching when actually moving. That's why I tend to leave RT off even with my 3070 because performance is still heavily sacrificed and to me, the visual improvements don't warrant that drop. That is just my personal opinion of course. Back to performance here then and I went through various settings to see how the frame rate was impacted. Firstly I kept the RT options on and dropped the lighting to medium. Ray traced reflections are the most important thing to me here so I didn't want to turn them off but I just couldn't get playable frame rates with this and other options on. With that said then I disabled everything, switched to the game's low preset and kept ray traced lighting at medium. Now at this point the visual difference is minimal but the game was still absolutely tanking in this downtown area. Don't get me wrong, I expected this and I'm not complaining, this video was born out of curiosity as opposed to anything else. Enabling RT on a GTX card and then moaning about low frames doesn't really make sense, but I do think it's interesting to document performance for anyone who wants to try this themselves. What do we have to do here then to get playable frame rates with ray tracing on, even though the conclusion here is pretty much to turn it off? Well, dropping to 70% of 1080p resolution, keeping reflections and shadows disabled, and sticking with medium lighting effects gives us a 30 plus FPS experience, just about. But here the visual differences will be next to non-existent. Cyberpunk 2077 with ray tracing on a GTX 1660 Super isn't worth it, but let's move on to our next title. In Call of Duty Cold War, ray tracing can enhance shadows from the sun, local shadows and improve ambient occlusion. The effects here are certainly more subtle at first and this game already has quality reflections that look great on a graphics card no matter the setting. In our first screenshot comparison take a look at the objects on top of this tabletop. We are using the high settings in game here with a few medium options. Look at the shadows under the picture frames too. When we enable all the ray tracing options these shadows are definitely improved but these changes will be even less noticeable when we're running around trying to wipe out the enemies. I'd probably have RT off and shadows on low usually anyway because the more frames the better in a competitive online FPS like COD. 
Here is another side-by-side -side comparison, and here the enhanced shadows are much clearer to see inside each individual shelf box thing. Again, not something I'd be too concerned with as I'm hunting down or running away from enemy players, but it's nice to see that the effects do work even with the 1660 Super. The question is then, how is gameplay affected? Well, first of all, with the RT options off, the game runs very well with a combination of high and medium. I'm playing the Miami map because I think visually it's one of the best in the game, and I'm playing against bots because I was pausing the game a lot and messing with various settings, which would have been unfair on real-life teammates. So we're getting respectable averages and decent 1.1% lows. If we do the same as we did in Cyberpunk and just enable everything, ray tracing-wise, first of all, with the highest options, then, well, the frame rate isn't as bad as it was in our first test, but we are still dropping way below 30 FPS with an average of 31. I think enabling ray tracing settings here makes even less sense than it does in Cyberpunk because the effects are more subtle, and we're actually losing more frames here. 91 on average. That is insane. With that said, if you want playable frame rates and still like to benefit from a slight improvement with shadows and ambient occlusion, you can turn everything on, but keep each setting at medium. From what I can tell, things do look slightly better than they do with RT completely disabled, but we are still seeing at least half of our original frame rate on average, and moreover the differences when running around the maps are going to be almost unnoticeable. Still, it's nice to know that the 1660 Super can make use of ray tracing with playable frame rates without any sacrifices to full 1080p resolution. Better yet, the game is still running with high and medium settings, so yeah, it looks great. Again though, if we look at this realistically, then the best bet here is to switch RT off completely, and I'd say the same for RTX cards as well, but of course that is just my opinion. Watch Dogs Legion has just one ray tracing option, and that is actually my favourite, reflections. Luckily, London is a very wet city, just like the rest of England to be honest, and Ubisoft have captured that perfectly with the many puddles that soak the capital's pavements. Thankfully for us, it's these puddles that create a wonderful sense of realism when RT is enabled, and if we switch from this screenshot to our ray traced screenshot here, you can see how the environments are accurately mirrored on the floor of this park. Again, here is a quick side-by-side -side shot that shows this off. First of all, let's take a walk through this park with the in-game preset set to high and ray traced reflections disabled. Watchdog still looks great and it runs really well on the 1660 Super with 73 FPS. The 1.1% lows aren't too bad either, though there were one or two noticeable dips, but this did seem to be mainly CPU related. This is a very processor intensive title. I then switched the ray traced reflections to ultra and walked through the same park with the fountain shooting its water jets high into the air. Reason being that this put even more strain on our GPU and gives us another worst case scenario look at how things are affected. Because of all the puddles, the RT option is probably most noticeable in this game and it does look very good, especially as the water ripples and the reflections change. But this of course takes a toll on performance as expected, with our frame rate cut in half, at least half. This isn't as bad as I first thought it would be to be fair, but we are still falling short of 30 FPS throughout most of the city. There are some waterless areas that will oppose this finding, but stay away from the Thames. So, is there an option that allows us to still notice the ray traced reflections, but see a more playable frame rate with the 1660 Super? Well, sort of. Medium RT reflections mean that we do see a plus 30 FPS average, just about anyway, and the enhanced reflections are still noticeable, though less so than before. Dropping the in-game graphical settings may also help, but ray tracing seems to override those sort of changes and still tanks the frame rate in certain areas, so we may as well stick to the high graphical preset here. Finally, it's Fortnite, which added ray tracing effects last year. There are a few settings to choose from here, including shadows, reflections, ambient occlusion, and global illumination. Now, it's a shame GTX cards don't have DLSS, as this would probably really help us out here, and you're probably thinking, well, surely Fortnite won't be that demanding anyway. 
Well, first of all, here is a before and after screenshot. Now, I can't see too much difference here, but admittedly, this was not the best location I could have used. Some spots in the game look absolutely fantastic with everything enabled. Gameplay time then. With RT off, we were seeing over 100 FPS at high settings with the 1660 Super i5, 10400F and 16 gigs of DDR4. With everything switched on and reflections turned up to epic, the game will make Cyberpunk look like a flawless experience. 6, 4 and 3 were the average and percentile numbers, and yeah, I'm going to assume that most of you would agree that this is unplayable. If we turn everything but reflections off and actually keep those on epic, then we do see some improvements, but it's going to be a sub 20 FPS experience for the most part, especially around this water filled swamp area where the frame rate dropped into the mid teens quite often. So, once again, can we use RT on this GTX card and get a playable frame rate? Well, yes, we can. All we needed to do was keep everything off aside from reflections, of course, and switch those from epic to medium. On occasion, our frame rate went above 60 FPS though averaged out at around 40 and still dropped significantly near our shiny ray traced water. With all that said then, GTX cards can make use of ray tracing even in their latest games or in the case of Fortnite games with RTX updates. Playable frame rates are also achievable but in reality it's most likely that you'll see minimum visual gain for a hefty performance sacrifice especially if ray tracing options need to be toned down in order to retain playable frames. Still, with a shortage of RTX cards, it's definitely worth playing around with ray tracing on that 1660 Super or 1060 or 1080 for example because it is there for you to experiment with and it can make for some pretty stunning screenshots and desktop wallpapers if nothing else. With all that said then, thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video, testing out ray tracing with an on RTX card is something that I've wanted to do for a while and I hope you guys have liked it as well. If you did, leave a like down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, let me know if you use RTX on a non RTX card and how it actually runs for you, and with all that said, hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.